Uh, next up we have Tony Mitra. Does anybody here know who Tony Mitra is? This is a way better response than I was expecting. Awesome. Uh, Tony is a retired marine engineer and a ship management executive. He is passionate about kicking GMO out and is convinced that a patented GMO and pesticide dri driven industry is not just bad for our health, but also a design to subvert Canada's de democratic foundation and turn it into a vassal state serving the needs of foreign corporations. Tony is a citizen journalist, a podcaster, a videographer, a food security activist, and a burgeoning public speaker. He is also writing a book, Canada Under GMO Attack. Most recently, he toured around Canada alongside Dr. Terry Brain for the Cross Canada Speakers Tour. He is also involved in arranging for Canadians to have their water, blood, urine, and mother's breast milk tested for the presence of Monsanto Roundup herbicide. He's doing that because the Canadian government won't. If you are interested in the possibility of joining this study, there are volunteer sign-up sheets. Um, Jarius and Rachel are running around with them. If you ask at that tent, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. If you're interested in doing that, by all means, please you leave your name, email, phone number, and Tony or myself will get in touch with you. Tony Mitra. So are we mad enough or not? We know Monsanto's GMO is bad, but what we didn't know before, like uh, Kenneth aptly pointed out, that even worse than GMO is the poison that they, they pass around with the pesticide called glyphosate. And it's not just we are being poisoned by eating GMO crop, which is, of course, also laced with this glyphosate. We are getting poisoned by eating even non-GMO food because glyphosate is now being sprayed on non-GMO crop like sugarcane and wheat. So when you buy bread, knowing that wheat is non-GMO, you are still vulnerable to be poisoned by this glyphosate. How bad is this? This crap. Well, there are not many independent scientists left in this world who can talk about the dangers of glyphosate because science has been hijacked by these biotech corporations. So there has never been more science censorship in the world like it is today. But there are still, thankfully, a handful of scientists that are, that are still able to talk about it. That's because their funding is not coming from the biotech industry. I can name a few to, the, to you all so that you can keep track of them. One of them is Dr. Don Huber of uh, University of uh, Purdue in Idaho. Uh, another is uh, Dr. Anthony Samsel. Uh, the third is uh, Dr. Stephanie Seneff of MIT. I know them. I talk to them almost almost every week, sometimes daily basis. And uh, the Samsel and Seneff have prepared this recent uh, science papers and, and charts that actually correlate year upon year rise of the use of glyphosate in Roundup matching exactly rise of reported cases of all kinds of autoimmune diseases starting from celiac and Crohn and, uh, and autism and obesity and uh, attention deficiency, you name it. And not only that, it is one of the biggest scientific lies ever told that glyphosate is safe for people. It, it is it is it is stored like that because it doesn't interfere directly with uh, with mammals like us but it is an antibiotic it kills our gut bacteria and now today we know that hundreds and hundreds of enzymes proteins vitamins that we need that we get from our food is not automatically taken from the fruit it needs to be broken down into its elements and rebuilt up into the exact molecule that we need and we cannot do that that gut bacteria does it so therefore you damage your gut bacteria depending on what part of it is damaged you fall sick for one or the other and these two scientists correlated the epidemic level rise of all these diseases going on in fact if you want to listen to them in their own voice the best way to do it is uh, go to my blog site and and listen to them because all the podcasts are up there and uh, if you uh, sign up there is fine otherwise you can pick up one of my name cards where my blog uh, detail is there you can uh, listen to Dr. Stephanie Seneff of MIT who is talking about talking to me about just one disease autism 20 years ago it was one in one in 10,000 people that uh, newborns that fell into the spectrum of autism 
Today it is less than 50, it's one out of 45. But I asked her, where is it going? And she knows the glyphosate amount being increased, there is no retraction yet. And the same way matching is the rise of autism. And she says by 2025, one out of two kids born in North America will fall under autism spectrum. It's in her own voice. She is a scientist of MIT. She is not a hack. You can listen to her in her own voice. She even tells me, Tony, I'm so worried, so worried that I'm thinking of telling young mothers, if you are going to have a baby, seriously consider one of two options. One, leave North America. Any goddamn place in this planet is better than this. Or two, go organic as if your life depended on it. In fact, the life of your child very well may depend on it. This is, this is Stephanie Senef of MIT. Okay, so this is how bad this crap is. Now, the, my two points here of talking will be one about the testing and one about public citizen action. About testing. I have written to all the governments in Canada, almost all, starting with Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, Health Canada, Forestry and Health Ministry of, of BC. Some of them don't bother to reply. They, they, they are not public servants. They think they are rulers or something. Some reply and always give you shifty answers. I've also written to uh, the lowest form of government, which is municipalities. Here is an example of Hero, who has, who has kick-started the revolution against GMO in BC. We will hear him talk later on. So, so the thing is, government will not test what should be their duty to check how much of this glyphosate has gotten into our drinking water, into our blood, into our urine, in our mother milk. They won't do it. They are always saying it is safe, there is no need to test it, there is no lab around, all kinds of bullshit. So, so, so. A group, Moms Against uh, Moms Across America, held by uh, started by founder Zen uh, Honeycutt, who has become my Facebook friend now. They started testing on their own uh, urine and blood and mother's milk and all that, and and that rattled up the things because many of the nursing women had glyphosate in their breast milk, passing it on the kids. Right now, although the biotech industry is poo pooing it, saying that it was not scientific, that it was not done properly, blah, blah, blah. But this result is already rattling up people. EPA has invited Zen to talk to them about possibility of whatever concern she has. And as we speak, there are more scientific tests being planned without involvement of people like us. I'm a rabble rouser. I mean, people, people, activists and so on, done more professionally and also. Uh, also, this is being done in Europe. Also, this is being organized now on an international level. I know in Russia they are doing it separately. I'm going to talk to them very soon about it. So, Canada had not been a part of this as far as I knew. But now, things are changing. A lot of Canadians want to test the, 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 their own environment, their own groundwater, their own urine, blood, etc. And now we got beginning to get quotations coming from US labs as well as Canadian labs, who, uh, certified labs whose result will uh, stand up in court. And, uh, and uh, they are willing to test for glyphosate for various kind of uh, samples. Uh, it, it costs between 100 and 200 odd dollars depending on how, serious, how, how uh, minute or detailed or not detailed what kind of test. Uh, there is a need to for the citizens to get involved with it and once we start there is also a need to get organized so that all these data that come up uh, one can put it in a map and begin to get a picture of how Canada is which areas are worse affected than which other areas which kind of age group or food habit people are affected and so on so there is a, there is a need to get involved a little bit and that's why uh, I in, invite those who are uh, interested stay in touch and then we see how it works I have personally decided that I will test one of one sample from my family, me or my wife's, uh, you know, our drinking water, urine or something. But I know that those who like us, who are careful about the food, who can afford to buy organic food, which is more costly at the moment, may have no glyphosate or less glyphosate compared to a vast majority of others who are not being so careful or they are not financially secure enough to buy organic safe food or they live in rural areas where these options are not very... So this picture will not be fair if we only test ourselves. So I decided that I myself will uh, pay for two tests, one from our family and one for some other deserving candidate who should be tested, government is not testing them, I will pay for it. And I, I encourage all of you to similarly 
similarly look around and find and we need to get this uh, map which are the areas where this test should be done and we encourage all of you to help out we need it help i mean government has has, has abandoned us so we have to bypass the political process and do it this is one part second part is as far as the scientific analysis is uh, uh, testing is concerned there are these two scientists stephanie senef i already mentioned to you and anthony samsel i already mentioned these two people are willing to offer a, a service to the canadian people under a pilot project of selected candidates of a selected area for a long time test of glyphosate uh, uh, increase of glyphosate in their environment in their food web increase of it in their body tissues and so on and increase of their disease level and so on and it has to be a proper study with peer reviewed analysis and so on so these two scientists are offering it uh, we'll have to find means to pay for those tests uh, they are not very costly and they are willing to pay some of it out of their own pocket for really poor people who cannot afford it and all that so that is one that is happening now once again uh, please stay in touch with me because i am in the middle of it and second is there is an effort to even a bigger full scale testing to be done by proper universities scientists who are willing to stake their scientific future on it because they can get blackball they can get discredited they can get sacked their funding can be so people are willing to risk their career for it uh, there are uh, biotech industries won't fund for them so there are there are private invest investors that are slowly coming together willing to put in their million dollars into a good cause so all this is happening i am not even supposed to mention it because we are not supposed to be part of it but this is happening as we speak and we hope that once we get this going we can shame this bloody government to do what they should have done instead of forcing us to do so, so this is a, so this is uh, the first part of my talk the second part gentlemen i was born in india where my parents generation and grandparents generation had to fight for their independence for their uh, for for their political independence they had to go to jail they had to follow gandhi they had to do a lot of things i came here thinking i was in a free country but gentlemen i have come to the realization that this democracy has gone to hell in a handbasket because this, this politicians this politicians have become essentially a, a, a tool of the oppressors you know they this government has become off monsanto by monsanto and for monsanto it is not for the people and and this has happened for a reason it's not monsanto's fault any corporation will always try to make money whichever hook or crook they can it is because our political system allows it and it and that has become because you and me have allowed these blinking politicians to get away with it it is my opinion that this is not going to change by simply talking again in a, in a mic it is not going to change by us jumping up and down with a placard all over the place it is not going to happen by simply asking politicians please look at this and please look at that it is only going to happen when we wrench back the control of the political process into the hands of the public and away from the control of corporations it is not going to change the world people like you and me it is difficult to control bigger uh, governments like like the provincial government or the ottawa government but what is possible is to control the local municipal governments of your own town that is very approachable that is very influential it, it it is very difficult for them to get away from you you meet them every day at your stores and all that and uh, it, it it is possible to influence them and i know many many councillors steve job is one of the uh, a greatest councillor you can find in canada uh, he kick started the whole thing in richmond but there are a lot of rogue councillors that that work for not your interest for the biotech country's interest and i have learned from other good councillors that these bumps get elected sometimes i am not kidding you with five votes five votes and they get them elected why because canadians are sleeping they don't go to the municipal election they don't even know when they get so all these rubbish people get elected gentlemen the buck stops at our feet we have to do is to re recognize which guys and which guys are against us and we have to kick the bombs into the pacific ocean that is the only way we can re regain our political independence this is not just about bad health this is not just about bad science 
the Canadian independence is under attack and it is being corrupted from the ground up. It is for us to rectify it. Gentlemen, that's all for me. I'll send, end it with a slogan. Hell no, Monsanto, take your freaking GMO. Hell no, Monsanto, take your freaking GMO. Hell no, Monsanto, take your freaking GMO.